Uh, hi, my name is Sachin Paradwaj, and uh, I'm going to present your session on micro segmentation. Micro segmentation is basically a buzzy word which you might have seen or heard from various people, uh, from the networking background guys, or maybe the compute. So uh, it it is something which has been trending from a long time, and it, it's also a, a, a great things to 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 use it in the modern infrastructure. So basically, what is micro segmentation? So micro segmentation is just a zero trust model which you are building it on your infrastructure, basically on the NSX platform. So it's something like a VM to VM communication where you have the capability to communicate a VM to a specific VM. It 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 is without leveraging any specific traffic or or anything else. So. This is, this is a common thing. Like if you're talking about uh, in NSX environment, micro segmentation is allow you to push those traffic or segmentations where, where you have a zero trust models and uh, uh, which, which, which hereby privileging the putting down all the protection at every level, whether it's a virtual card, VM NIC, or anything else like a transport node that prepares from the NSX generation with the help of NSX preparations that we need to say that. So uh, uh, how we are using this micro segmentation in, in today's world. So let's let's talk about the traditional environment which we which we have earlier where we have the perimeter of firewalls which is which is which is as could be say the parameter gateway which is at the topmost level of every organization or every infrastructures. So perimeter uh, uh, gateway is just used to protect protect you from the from at the topmost level. So uh, I, I'm not saying anything wrong with perimeter firewall. It is definitely a good things to be have at the topmost level to procure you or to secure you from from threat which is coming to your environment. So that's pretty good. So but what about the things which is there under the perimeter firewall? Let's say about the workload. Or could be a virtual instance, or could be a container, or could be anything which is there inside the perimeter firewall. So that perimeter firewall is not protecting all those things inside inside it. So that's something maybe maybe a, a caution of concern which we have to uh, take it out. Let's say what could be the reason uh, why we required micro segmentation, or could be something which we required to protect down to that because we already have the the, the perimeter firewall at the top. And layer, why we require something the down layer, or or could be at the VM level or something else. So uh, let let me give you some 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 uh, uh, case studies or could be uh, some some examples why we require. Let's say uh, uh, your end user is using an uh, application or, or or accessing an an any email from your Outlook and he got an an uh, email which is a phishing email which state anything about, about uh, the torsion virus or anything else which may hit you in your environment and that may attack your environment and possibly it could be something which may harm your environment and can take out your any any uh, data which is more secure with an environment you don't want to take it out from the network outside your perimeter firewall. Second example could be an end user who is using a USB drive to extract any data or taking out anything from the network or, or, or maybe installing any software that, that USB might be having an, an infected virus, could be a torsion horse. <laughs> That's a common in the network environment. So that may have an environment or that may that may attack it. Attackers are, are quite aggressive to, to do all those things, to hack your environment and do whatever they want. So to protect all of them, we required micro segmentations to be enabled with the environment so that our our instances or, or, or our, our infrastructure down to the parameter firewall should be protected as well as so in this presentation I'll, I'll let you know about I'll state about the challenges which we have a traditional data center which I have already uh, elaborated to you describe an SXT micro segmentation how it works recognize micro segmentation use cases and identify benefits of micro segmentations in NSXT environment. So let's get started again. See, so to, as I say, then traditional data center security challenges are quite high. 
So traditional security are more emphasis at the environment level rather than specific application level. So traditional environment is something which more emphasis at the parameter level at the firewall, which is which is which is at the topmost at the gate at the gateway side. So they are not much concerned about the application level security. Doesn't prevent from literal between workload and the tiers. So that states the same thing. Let's like suppose you you have protected your your parameter fire, uh, firewall at the topmost level. Just just like a fence, you have protected your your house. And what else? What if somebody uh, jumps from your firewall, jump from your fences, and, and go inside your house and take out whatever they want? So that is something which has not been prevented from the traditional data center parameter firewalls, or you can say uh, any firewall which has been physically allocated. So there are more challenges on low priority target at first. Low priority targets could be anything about the VM or could be any bare, bare metal server or anything which is there under the parameter firewall could be being, being the first priority to get it attacked by the attackers. So once you have the uh, data center hijacked or somebody hijacked your data center and entered your parameter firewall inside it, they can freely go inside the data center and do whatever they want. They can take out a critical data or anything else. So it's really, it, it's a challenges which we have in the traditional data center. So how can we overcome with that challenges? So to overcome in challenges, we have certain things which required to be there. It should be having a zero trust at most granular level. What do you mean by zero trust basically? Is zero trust is something like if you have, if you have an environment, if you have an application which is which has been which has been set up like two application, which has been set up into the environment and, uh, and, and say that application, it's having its own boundaries or something which, which specify like this set of application required to, to connect to different application, which, which specifically require a set of protocol. Let's say we ha I have, I have a set of uh, application like web application and I have another web application to get interacted with them. So the protocol which is reused mostly is HTTPS. So let's why not to do one thing? Why, why not to enable HTTPS traffic from one source to destination and, and to drop all the packets which is not to required. So basically it's something like we are, we are, we are giving zero trust on a relationship or could be a trust between two VMs which definitely allows only single type of protocol and drop rather the other things. So this is one of the topmost things. It, it may be the application, uh, uh, you can define the application, whatever the application you have and you can define the boundaries of that. Let's say uh, you have an application or database application and you want to uh, flow only the database uh, like SQL servers, you just uh, enable the protocol. We, we have a set of around 400 type of uh, uh, protocols in the into into the uh, distributed firewall, which we are going to talk about in next session, next slide, where you can enable those uh, uh, ports or channels into the security profiles of that VMs, and that that specific uh, protocol, uh, that specific port will only connect with the destination. Rest all port and rest all traffic will get dropped out. What happens with that? It will minimize your traffic over the network. It will, there will no congestion at all in your network. And that will definitely help you to granularly uh, uh, move your throughput of your infrastructure. So every second thing is every VM has its own firewall as well as a security policies at individual level. So as I said, so, so zero trust relationship ship and, and, and uh, most granularity, how is it? It's been, it's been managed from NSXT and how NSXT will take it up. It's helped with the help of distributed firewall at the VM level. So, so when you enable distributed firewalls, it's been uh, enabled at, at the hypervisor level or could we say uh, at, at the ESX level, if, uh, if, if you are connecting with the ESXi host and that ESXi host is being, uh, uh, that, that, that uh, distributed firewall is managed by the kernel level and each VM, which is there at the ESXi host are being, are being governed with that uh, distributed firewall. So uh, that is something that's been protected. So you can, can set a security profile uh, on, on those VMs. Let's say uh, uh, something like a, a source and destination. I have uh, these set of VMs will only speak to this set of VMs at specific port. 
and whatever the uh, uh, packets will come will get dropped out. So this is how you can specify at the VM level, at the VM NIC level specifically. So this is one of the most important thing which you can do it in distributed firewall. Uh, security policies can be based on VM network application attributes. So you can you can define the policies and distributed uh, firewall based upon factors. Like you can, you can specify like VMs, you know, what type of VMs you have, you can group those VMs and make a group of them and you can specify that this set of VMs I require to have in the policies. It could be a network. Network in a sense, like you can put in specific IP addresses. This sort of IP address will be allowed to this set of IP address to communicate with them. Or you can put it for the application basis. Like I have the web servers, set of group of web servers will speak to only to these set of uh, application servers so like this, you can set the policies about uh, in, the, in the distributed firewall. Uh, security controls can be applied to any application at any point of time. So as I said that you can, can apply the security controls to any application. It doesn't restrict you to specifically allow any, any one of the application or two of the application. We have sort of VMs, sort of uh, 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 application, which is here in the uh, uh, distributed firewalls options which you can specifically or you can you can customize your application which you would like to add it into that so that that's also an option to do within the uh, uh, distributed firewall so uh, micro segmentation in data center and a 60 how it works micro segmentation segregate data into security segments down to individual workload vms now let's see. Uh, uh, see, uh, you, you have this diagram. If you can see over here, uh, I have a set of groups, which is connecting to three VMs. Let's say I have a finance, I have HR, and I have engineering group of set of three VMs, and those set of VMs are connecting to the stateless services of uh, the environment. Let's say the AD, NTP, DHCP, DNS, and CERT. So now let's say that I, uh, these any of the stateless services can communicate to any one of the groups. Hey, you can go ahead and do that with the help of security firewalls. You can just say that these sort of VMs, this sort of uh, group of uh, uh, of VMs can specifically speak to DHCP. You can allow the services to DHCP uh, on the specific VMs or on the set of VMs, or you can also specify that that group of finance VMs can can speak to HR if they would like to, or you can specify that engineering set of VMs group cannot speak to HR or finance as they don't have their own business to do that. Why do they go for there uh, to, to see uh, uh, all the uh, payloads and other things? So, so you can segregate them into the, in the different groups so that they, they, only the set of VMs can speak within them themselves. As you can see that each VM is having its own firewall. This is what we have. We have the capabilities in the distributed firewall. So every VM have its own firewall. You can define it, which is at the VM NIC level. So it says that the IO control and, and from NIC level, it's VM NIC level, the control of the firewall you have specifically at the VM NIC level of each VM. Each VM is having its own firewall. You can just specify what all permission you required, what security levels you would like to specify for the VM and how granular you would like to make those micro segmentation of that specific uh, group of VMs to other group of VMs. So uh, it monitors the states of active connections and use this information traverse the VM NIC. So uh, let's say uh, a VM, you have four NICs into that. So uh, does it mean uh, that all four NICs will be part of uh, a distributed firewall? Yes, they would be because whatever the traffic which is running, whatever the active NICs which is there into, into the VMs are all included in the distributed firewall security profile sections or they are active into that. So next we have attached the central control and operational distributed firewall directly to each VM. So that's it, it, it centralizedly connect and operate the distributed firewall at the VM level, not at any other or not at the uh, uh, hypervisor or it, you are governing your firewall at the VM NIC level specifically. See the difference over here, you're not installing any specific agent 
of antivirus or anything else. So it's, it's completely agentless. So distributed firewall, which we have installed, which has been automatically configured. Uh, when you when you configure uh, the stupid firewall, it will configure the NIC level uh, at, at the hypervisor level and the hypervisor level, the kernel level, it will uh, allow you to do it at the VM levels and with the help of security profiles and rules which you have, uh, which, you, which you create manually to, to as per your needs. So the use cases of uh, uh, micro segmentations, we specifically speak about NSX. It's protect your critical application the environment with micro segmentations. So there are two, two things, two ways you can speak it about. Uh, critical application you're protecting, like if, if uh, one thing in the way, like if you are having uh, the parameter firewall, if somebody jumped out or got attacked within the infrastructure inside it, this micro segmentation, which is, you can say the distributed firewall will protect you to get affirmated from, from the critical application so that they will not get hampered, they will not get been attacked by the attackers, so they will get secured. This is one of the th most uh, use cases. Second use cases is that, let's say if you have a set of applications or like we have the HR application, you have engineering app set of group of applications or the group of VMs, that we uh, that HR would not be able to connect to the VM which is there at uh, at, at uh, the engineering group of VMs. So, so there, there, there could be a micro segmentation within that, or, or could be, you can say uh, it, it's uh, segmentations of uh, the uh, channels, or you can say uh, the traffic which you're flowing as, as per the protocol or for the port level, or it could be the service levels. You can define that this set of uh, source VM source could speak to a specific port or protocol. Other than that, when the protocols comes in, they'll get dropped off. So secure uh, virtual desktop infrastructure, agentless uh, antivirus with uh, gas interceptions, and uh, it creates a DMZ anywhere. So you have a set of groups, and that groups will get uh, automatically uh, connecting as, as, as treated as a DMZ anywhere. So this is how you can connect with that. So benefit of micro segmentations, it's limit lateral movement. As I say, that it will, if, if anything's uh, jump off from the firewalls, uh, from the fences uh, within the network, it will it will uh, uh, limit, uh, it will protect you from the lateral movements. It minimizes the risks, risk and impact of security breaches also. It simplifies network traffic. So whatever the traffic which you, which you have allowed in the security firewalls, it, it will only allow that specific firewalls. Use cases is infrastructure. It, it will use the topology which you have specified in the security firewalls. It lower the capex and opex uh, 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 things uh, within infrastructure. As it minimizes those all all software defined storage or software defined infrastructure as a DC. So it will definitely uh, help you in that. It automates IT services delivery. So so this is all uh, uh, which is which is which is helpful in that. And uh, uh, this all concludes the sessions of mine with the help of which, which is NSX uh, micro segmentation.